Hello everyone, Mystic Juicer here, uh, bringing you something a little bit different today. I'm going to start a small uh, video series uh, with a couple of videos just meant to take people, essentially intended for people who have just found Yomi. Um, they're excited to, to play it and get good at it, and they've played a couple of games and maybe they're struggling with some common kind of issues that a lot of people find when they first pick up Yomi, which is basically, it feels completely random. Like, when you're, if you get a lucky streak and you're winning right off the bat, you feel like a genius, the game is amazing, but most of the time you've probably, you've won some, you've lost some, you feel kind of eh, uncomfortable, you're not sure, you know, am I doing this right? Is there a way to do this right? Is this just rock, paper, scissors in the sense of, you know, I I might as well just roll a dice and and uh, and play a random card out of my hand every time and sometimes I win and sometimes I lose. So it's not quite aimed at the total beginner who has no idea what Yomi is and like what an attack is and what a throw is and whatnot, but it is intended to uh, reach people who have very limited experience with the game, don't really have a sense of where the where the skill part of the luck skill balance lies in Yomi. So if this is your very first video and you haven't played this game before and you have no idea what this Yomi thing is, um, I invite you to check out, uh, I've got a link to a playlist uh, in, on my channel. Uh, that has links to a couple of different excellent first primers, like uh, videos for people who are just coming into the game and want to learn the very basics of what is an attack, what's a throw, how do I read these cards, and how do I play this game. And there will be a link there. The other thing too is uh, if you're just starting out and you have, you're an absolute, complete novice, you have no idea what's going on, um, Go to fantasystrike.com slash game slash index, essentially the game portion of the thing, once you've built your account, and just click on the tutorial button, and once you're done that, click on the tutorial 2, and once you're done that, do tutorial 3. And that'll really give you a primer of absolutely all of those core concepts. Putting that aside, this is for as soon as you're done that tutorial, I want to focus essentially on when do you play when do you play options what is where where's the skill part and, and how am I actually going to predict my opponent if I feel like I should just be playing stuff randomly to be unpredictable and unpredictable is the way you win so that's not the case and we're gonna be spending a lot of time on this screen essentially these are the options you can play in Yomi these are your combat reveal options, excluding jokers for for now. We'll talk about those later. Imagine they don't exist. These are the things that you have to choose between. Every turn, you are picking one of these four options. Why would you pick one over the other? Obviously, it's a you know it's a rock, paper, scissors kind of motif. Attack speed throws. Throws beat blocks or dodges, blocks and dodges beat attacks. But where, why should I be playing one or the other? Both attacks and throws deal damage, so why should I be, why should I choose an attack over a throw or a throw over an attack? Other than I think that my opponent is going to play the option that beats the other one or is weak to the other one. So, let's start off with attacks. The aim of the game in Yomi is to reduce your opponent to zero health. And I'm going to start with a very basic kind of fundamental law of Yomi, which is that the more cards you have in your hand, the more damage you can do. It's not always broadly true. You can have a garbage hand of 13 cards, um, and someone with an excellent hand of 6 cards will be able to deal more damage out, but, but broadly, broadly speaking, when you have 13 cards in hand, you have more potential to deal big damage than somebody at 6 cards 
And somebody at 6 cards has more potential to deal damage than somebody at 2 cards, or 1 card. Generally speaking. So, so keep it, keeping that law in mind, these, these options will make much more sense in when to play them. Attack, so both attack and throw deal damage. They're the way that uh, that you actually lay the hurt on people directly. Leave aside dodge for now. Attacks are your most efficient way of dealing damage. They are the option... Combos that start with attacks, generally speaking, are the highest damaging combos that characters have access to, and they're the most efficient um, ways to deal damage. So if you want to put the hurt on somebody, we're pretending that our opponent is declining to play a card. Broadly speaking, attacks are the way are the thing you're going to play. That's where your your big big pain is going to come out. Okay. Throws tend to be much less efficient. So if you want to deal damage, this is what you want to do. So let's pretend we both have we have two two players, both have high uh, hands hand sizes. They've got thirteen cards in hand each. If both of them want to deal damage to each other, they're going to want to push the attack button. Which brings us to, how do we prevent that? And that's with blocking or dodging. So both of these are going to counter attack moves uh, played by our, by our opponents. What's the difference between blocking or dodging? So obviously blocking, if you successfully block an attack, you're going to keep your block and you're going to draw a card. Whereas with a dodge, you're going to lose, you're going to discard that dodge and you're going to be able to follow up with a single attack, single move. So broadly speaking, what that actually means is blocking is very good in the early game and dodging is very good in the, in the late game. Because dodging only lets you respond with a single move, it's generally going to deal much less damage than a combat revealed attack into a combo. Some characters have really terrible dodge follow-up, like they have very low ability to deal damage or max damage off of a dodge. So that gets into character specifics, but generally speaking, you're going to deal much less damage with a dodge than you would with an attack. Blocking gets you extra cards in hand. So, dodging is amazing when your opponent is at low health. And your opponent is generally at low health near the end of the game. At the beginning of the game, even the lowest uh, health character has 70 hit points. And there are no moves in the game that deal 70 damage off of a successful dodge. So generally speaking, in the early game, what you want to be doing is blocking in order to get enough cards in hand to be able to deal that huge combo damage off of an attack. Whereas late game, when your opponent is at 10 hit points, you can easily dodge into 10 hit points worth of damage. Or you can more easily dodge into 10 hit points worth of damage than otherwise. So that... the... so... so... Okay, so again, going back to basics, if we want to deal a lot of damage to our opponent, we want to be attacking. If we want to prevent a lot of damage from our opponent, and either build hand or deal damage of our own, or, or, uh, or kill, essentially, we'll, we'll just call, we'll, we'll pretend that dodging only exists when you want to go for lethal, because that's when it's strongest. So in the early game, we want to be blocking a lot because we start with seven cards in hand. And in the late game, we want to be dodging a lot, because if our opponent has a high, you know, wants to deal us a lot of hurt, we can, we can kill them off of a successful dodge. And that's where throws come in. Throws, again, compared to attacks, 
typically deal far less efficient damage. They deal far, far lower amounts of damage than off of an attack. They deal a little bit more than a dodge. But they beat both of these defensive options. So in the early game, the prime in the early game, the primary purpose of throwing is to prevent people from building car, uh, building a, a, a good hand. They are going to so when we want to deal damage, we want to attack. We want when we want to uh, go build for more options, put more potential damage into our hand. We want to block. And when we want to prevent our opponent from putting more options into their hand, we want to throw them. And throwing also moves us to an end game because it still does do damage. So that's the that's the core concept there. The the main thing to keep in mind, and the thing that will make a lot of this make more sense, is if you think about your options in terms of by default, you want to block. And the reason you want to block by default is that it only loses to throws. It beats attacks by giving you a card and returning, a, returning the block to your hand. It ties blocks, so you don't lose anything to blocks. You both your opponent and you both pick your cards back up and put them back in your in your hands. And it beats dodges. If you think about it. You keep your card, your opponent loses their card. So blocking is very, very effective. It's a very strong move, either when you're on low cards, when you want to rebuild that hand, put more options in. Or early game when you were just looking for more options. When you're stuck in a bad hand, you really don't have much uh, stuff going on. It's just effectively... So, that, so that's why I want to, to encourage you to think of blocking as your default. You should almost... On, you should only not block. You should only do anything but block if you have a compelling reason to. And those compelling reasons can vary. I'll give you a couple of, of examples. If my opponent's at 1, it's a compelling reason not to block at 1 hit point. If I have a dodge, because the payoff from a dodge, a successful dodge, is victory. <laughs> so I would much rather dodge. And so you can see that trade-off as, as it goes into the late game, as hit point totals get low, block starts becoming less valuable and dodges become much more valuable. Another compelling reason could be I've blocked seven times in a row and my opponent may eventually build up the courage to throw me. <laughs> so one off, <laughs> a compelling reason could be just so I'm not a, f uh, a free target for throws. That is absolutely a compelling reason to throw in an attack or throw in a strong throw of your own. If you're at three cards Blocking, so, sorry, other other reasons not to block. Um, you have an incredibly strong attack. Um, you have an incredibly fast attack that leads into a lot of damage, or uh, maybe you even have a, a slower attack, a riskier attack, that deals a lot of damage, and you, you want to see if it works. That's a perfectly legit reason to uh, <laughs> to play an attack. If you know your opponent has no no cards in hand, that is also a very compelling reason not to play a block. So, so there are tons of reasons, and and, and they range in uh, in validity and 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 uh, and applicability, and how compelling they are uh, for for why not to block. But they are out there, even even. I just don't. I just think that I've been blocking too often, and my opponent is going to throw me now. It is a reason not to block. But think of block as the default, and the rest of Yomi will make much more sense to you. So I think that's essentially all I've got to say about uh, the basic concept of why Yomi is not random. 
because once you start looking at um, at it from this perspective of block being your default of attack being your uh, your most effective means of dealing big damage at a time and your throw being a means of reducing the value of block essentially um, you'll have a much better time of it the other thing to keep in mind generally in, when, in speaking of uh, compelling reasons not to block is if you think of block as a default then you can start playing sort of an evaluative means or, or a, an, a, basically a, a type of valuation strategy which is to look at your hand and see what kind of damage you can do and what your best option is so out of these four options out of attack throw block or dodge which is the best and and a simple question of what should I play now could simply be okay I'm gonna to default to block do I have any good damage off of attacks if no then I'm not going to attack do I have any good damage off of throw if no then I'm not going to throw can I get lethal off of dodge no then I'm not going to dodge and if you ask yourself these questions and look at the uh, look at the character that you're playing and uh, I'll have the next video is just going to be how to learn a character and how to evaluate uh, what characters might be good for you and how to get a sense of that uh, so stay tuned for that but but think of it in those terms and I think you'll have a much better time of uh, Yomi and see where, seeing where the fun of this game really is okay uh, if this video was helpful to you, if uh, you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment and uh, I will absolutely address it either in video form or um, just in the comments below. Thank you for watching and uh, enjoy, enjoy yourself some Yomi. Cheers.